I told Clyde this morning that he was preaching, so obviously he didn't believe me because he didn't get up. So it's a long reading again from the Gospel of John, the, the story of the raising of Lazarus, right? And there's a lot of things happening here. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, so what do we look at? What's most important this morning? To, to take out of this 45 verses, right, which should continue on because the, the continuation of this actually shows that this is the impetus in the Gospel of John that created the, the need for Jesus to die. The fact that he rose, he made a man rise from the dead is what really made the Jews say that this man has to die. If you continue on reading in John chapter 11, verses 46 through the end, it talks about how then the Jews plotted against him. Because this moment, because he created life, he has to die. But why? What is it in this lesson? There's so many things here, right? It says that at the beginning, Lazarus had become ill and Mary and Martha sent word to the teacher because Jesus loved Lazarus and Jesus loved Martha and Jesus loved Mary. And so Mary and Martha sent word to Jesus that Lazarus had come ill and he gets a one. That's one day, right? They send a message to him. He's a day away. He gets the message. He waits two more days, right? Because he says... We're not going yet. If Jesus really loved Lazarus that much, why didn't he drop what he was doing and go to Lazarus? What was he doing? What? No, well, he was stalling, but what was he doing? Was he waiting for him to die? I mean, but what else was he doing? Maybe he was, what? I mean, the, the answer here is, we don't know. It doesn't tell us. John doesn't tell us what Jesus was doing, where he was at. But we we must assume that either Jesus knew what was going on and he was going to to raise Lazarus from the dead, which we can assume that that's the case anyhow. But what he was doing wherever he was at was more important than him going to be with Lazarus at that point in time. So he waited two days. And then he tells the disciples, we have to go back to Jerusalem, to Bethany, because... Lazarus has fallen asleep and they don't get it, right? But that's the thing you got to read there. Jesus said, let us go back. Let us go to Bethany because our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep and I am going to go and awaken him. Remember that. Jesus says, we got to go back and we got to wake him up. And the disciples say, well, if he's just sleeping, it's going to be all right. And then Jesus says, You guys just don't get it, do you? He's dead. But we're going to go and I'm going to raise him from the dead. And then Thomas inserts that wonderful line there, which we're not going to talk about. Let us go so that we may die with him also. Right? Is he talking about Lazarus or is he talking about Jesus? Because in chapter, I said we weren't going to talk about it, but just a snippet. In chapter 10, Jesus is almost stoned in, in Jerusalem. So... Jesus was almost killed, and now he's going back to where they had wanted to kill him. But when Jesus comes to Bethany, before he's even into the town, Martha gets word of it, and she runs out to meet him. And she says to him, it's in in your your bulletins. And she, she says to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then Jesus started asking her questions. Do you believe in the resurrection from the dead? Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And I believe that we will all be rose, we will all rise again on the last day, right? Martha gives every right answer. She has the perfect faith if you read that reading. Jesus seems to not be moved at all. He just stands there. He says nothing to her other than I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me shall, even though they die, still still live. Right? He doesn't, he seems to be unfazed by her unswerving 
ground, rock-hard faith. And then she goes and lies to Mary and says that Jesus has asked for her. (laughs) Right? Did you catch that? Because Jesus never said, bring Mary to me. Martha went to Mary and said, the teacher's here and he wants to, and he's calling for you. So Mary goes back. And what does Mary do? Mary falls at his feet, weeping, saying, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Right? Twice now. And then you get the, what people know as shortest verse in the Bible, right? What's the shortest verse in the Bible? You'd think. You have to ask, though. You have to say, what translation are we talking about? In English, yes, Jesus wept in the King James Version is the shortest verse in the Bible. However, in the Greek, the verse 11, chapter 11, verse 35 of the Gospel of John has three words and 18 letters. The 12th verse of 5th Thessalonians has two words and 14 letters, which is pray without ceasing is actually the shortest verse in the Greek Bible. So when someone says, what's the shortest verse in the Bible? You have to say, what translation, right? It's not actually John 11, 35. But Jesus wept. And why is Jesus weeping? Why is Jesus weeping here? He's greatly disturbed. What does the word disturbed mean? It actually says that twice. It says that in verse 33. Right? Where I gotta find me here real quick. When Mary came where Jesus was, you saw him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. What does it mean to be disturbed? Let me, let me put this a different way. This word right here is, is an interesting... Oh, you got an answer. Okay, what is it? Annoyed. Yes. I love that. That's a great answer. Because that's really what it is. Jesus is annoyed. He's not upset that Lazarus is dead. He's annoyed by what's happening around him. That word is really mean to translate it correctly as Jesus. <sighs> Parents, you know that sound, right? <laughs> Can you clean out the dishwasher? <sighs> <laughs> right? That, that's what Jesus did right there. Jesus is annoyed because... The people around him just don't get it. And we don't get it either, right? I mean, think about what Mary and Martha are saying to Jesus, right? If you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many of us have ever said that? If God had been here, this wouldn't have happened. If God was present at this moment, that wouldn't have happened, right? Where is God at? Why isn't God with me? Right? Have you said it? If you haven't said it, you've thought it. Right? We get to those points. Jesus comes in and does what he's going to do all the time. Because it wasn't Martha coming and asking him and giving him all of the right theological answers to understanding of faith and how her faith had settled her and given her something to hold on to and anchor her in her life. It wasn't about Mary coming and weeping at his feet and bending upon his emotions, asking why he wasn't there to raise his, her brother from the dead. Jesus had already decided long before he went that he was going to Bethany to wake up Lazarus. Nobody made him do that. That's why he was there. And he went there. And he said, roll away the stone. And Martha says to him, it's been how many days? Four days. Why is, I've said this in, I've said this here before. Why is four days important? Right? Why did Jesus wait two days? He got one day message, two days to wait, and then he went on the fourth day. Lazarus is laying in the tomb on the fourth day. Why is the fourth day important? Because the spirit was known to hover over the body for three days. And if the person didn't wake up on by the fourth day, they were dead. 
right? It gets us the term dead ringer. How many of you have heard that term before? Do you know where it comes from? They used to tie strings onto people's fingers when they buried them. So if they started to twitch, the bell would ring and they knew that the person wasn't actually dead. It's a dead ringer. Lazarus was dead. Jesus wanted to make sure that these people understood. He didn't just go in and wake Lazarus up. Lazarus was dead. But here's the kicker to this. Did Jesus lie to the disciples? They're really quiet now. They want to... I, asked, I guess I asked a good question. Did Jesus lie to the disciples? Right? Jesus, when... Uh, da, 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 da. The one who you love is ill. Where? Yeah, I'm trying to find that one. This illness, verse 4. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus just told the disciples when he got message that Lazarus was ill, that Lazarus was not going to die. But then he said later to the disciples that Lazarus was dead. So did he just lie to the disciples at the beginning of the chapter? No, he didn't. Why? I did. I'm, I'm old and half deaf. Whoever said that, say it louder. <laughs> Kind of. See, here's the thing. Jesus said, I am to Martha, right? When Martha was answering all of his questions, right? I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me will never die. And he who lives and believes in me will never see death, right? So how many of us actually die? There's actually two deaths. There's a physical death which none of us are going to escape. Right? And in John, death is literally the separation between God and you. So even though Lazarus was physically dead to Jesus, he wasn't dead because Lazarus was always connected to God. And that's the thing that we have to remember that Mary and Martha didn't get. And the reason that Jesus was disturbed or annoyed. Right? No matter what, Jesus is always with us. Jesus is always here and he's always walking through the darkest valleys that we ever go through. He's with us to guide us. He's with us to lead us. He's with us to protect us. And he's with us to invite us. To come and be a part of everything that happens, right? Because Jesus rolls away that stone and I can't imagine the stench that came out of there. But Jesus yelled for Lazarus to come out and Lazarus came out of the tomb wrapped up in his, in his grave clothes. And instead of Jesus going over and unwrapping him and hugging him and, and telling him how much he loves him, what does Jesus say? Unbind him and let him go. Because Jesus wants us to participate in the wonderful miracles that he does every day. Jesus wants us to be a part of what he's doing in this world. Showing us that life is not something... Life is not something that is going to keep us separated from God. And death is not going to do that either. He wants us... To always be connected to him. And that we will never die. Because God will always be with us. To guide us and to lead us. So don't ask where is God. Know that he's always with you. And be looking for where he's inviting you. To come and be a part of what he's doing.